Hello everybody, in this video we are going to review proportions. Now I know for a fact that in all of the pre-algebra classes, as soon as you learn what a fraction is, you have to start solving proportional reasoning problems. And all a proportion really is, it's just equal ratios, that's it. So equivalent fractions are examples of proportions. Um, they're usually disguised in word problems like estimating sizes of populations, or scaling up figures and finding unknown side lengths, or probability problems, but really all they are are equal ratios. And sometimes you're told specifically to solve a proportion, which as an algebra teacher just means, hey, solve the equation for the unknown. And that's how I approach proportions. I don't think of them as some separate entity or some separate mathematical concept. They're just little equations that happen to be all fractiony, and that's it. So let's review a couple of ways that you can solve for the unknowns in a proportion. Uh, if I saw this problem and I had to solve for x, my first instinct is going to be to scale things up. Because in this case, that's the easiest thing to do. Figuring out how to turn a 2 into a 12 with the multiplication, because scaling fractions is always a multiplication, I have to multiply by 6, right? So that means to turn the 5 into the x, I have to also multiply by 6, which means x is going to be 30. And if I think about the fraction 12 over 30, it does indeed simplify down to 2 fifths, right? Because remember, proportions are just equal ratios or equal fractions. So this one can be solved by scaling. But scaling is not always the best method here. If that were like 87 and that were like 15, then yeah, I'm not going to figure out a scale factor between those numbers and then use it to find the x the other number. So another technique that a lot of people are taught is this thing called cross multiplication. Now as a math teacher, I don't like cross multiplication, primarily because of the way it's taught. You're just sort of taught some algorithm, like a series of steps that you always do, and you don't really understand where the steps come from. I hate that. I want you to know where everything comes from, right? Everything came from something and everything is going to go someplace. Your understanding of mathematics in general is better if you know where stuff comes from and where it's leading. Right, so, but let's quickly review what cross multiplication is um, before we talk about why it works. So one thing is uh, people are taught that, hey, like you can make a little x here, like a diagonally. When you multiply those things together, they're going to be equal. So I know that 2x, 2 times x, is equal to 12 times 5. And some people even go as far as, well, like I don't want x, I, w I don't want 2x, I want x. So you get x is equal to 12 times 5 over 2, which is 60 over 2, or 30. So it is indeed true that in a proportion, which is two fractions that are equal, that denominator of one times numerator of the other is equal to denominator times numerator. And it makes this little cross. That's absolutely true. But where it comes from is more... Interesting. And there will be times, especially more advanced math, when I make these proportions look a little more complicated with variables and squares and stuff, that you might actually want to do that step to make the equation look simpler that you're trying to solve. But cross multiplication comes from just basic equation solving techniques. Right? If I have 2 over 5 equals 12 over x, and my job is to solve for x, I don't want x in the denominator, I want it in the numerator. So the way I do that is to think about what mathematical operation is going on here. That's 12 divided by x, so I want to undo whatever has been done. So I multiply both sides by x, right? And so those x's are gone. And then I don't want the 5 in the denominator, so I can absolutely do the same thing and multiply both sides by 5. 5's are gone there. And so then I get 2x equals 12 times 5, which is the exact same thing there, so this just comes from multiplication, the fact that I can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number. So cross multiplication is really just multiplying. So for me, as I said, as a mathematician, I don't think of these proportions as anything other than an equation. Now one trick that some people learn when solving proportions that look like this is like, oh hey wait, I don't want x in the denominator, so I want the x in the numerator. So you can absolutely invert both sides of the equation, solve it that way. So now that we've just kind of really briefly, tersely talked about solving proportions, let me show you something that's a little bit special with proportions that you might not have seen. 
So as I said earlier, proportions are just equivalent ratios, right? So they're just equivalent ratios. And so I can look at a whole family of ratios, like 1 over 2, and 2 over 4, and 3 over 6, and 4 over 8. Every single one of these ratios is equivalent, and I can set them all equal to each other, and I can come up with a whole different, a whole bunch of different proportions, like 1 half equals 4 eighths, and 3 6 equals 2 fourths. Now what I'm going to do with all these numbers is I'm going to say that the top number represents a y value of a point, and the bottom number represents the x value of a point. So if I see the ratio 1 half, that's going to translate to the point 2 comma 1, and then 2 over 4 is going to translate to 4 comma 2, 3 over 6 is going to translate to 6 comma 3, etc, etc. And I'm going to graph the points made up by these ratios. And I want you to see what happens. So let's have our scale count just by ones on x's and y's. So the point 2 comma 1 is right there, 4 2 is right there, and then 6 3 is right there, and then 4 8 is going to be right there. Oh hey, check it out! Every single one of these points lines up in a line. So what that means is, is if you have a proportional relationship, if you turn the points into x's and y's, where the denominator is the x and the numerator is the y, you're going to get a little line. And if I scooch backwards and go the other way, I get 0, 0, which is kind of a problem because 0 over 0 is not equal to a half, but bear with me. Because if I keep going down 1 over 2, I get the point negative 2 comma negative 1. And if I look at that as a ratio, negative 1 over negative 2 is indeed equal to 1 half. And then I can go backwards, and I can get negative 4 comma negative 2. And so what this line here represents, every point, I should say, on this line represents a ratio that is equivalent to these ratios. And so I can find fractional values in between here, and if I set it up y divided by x, it's going to be uh, equal to 1 half. This is a very special feature of proportions, that if I took every single ratio that it was equal to and thought of the ratio as y over x, it's going to graph as a line. Not only is it going to graph as a line, but it's going to graph as a line that goes through the origin. Now you may have asked yourself, why did I choose y over x as opposed to x over y? And there's a very good reason. Well, actually there are two good reasons. One is that in algebra we like equations to be in the form y equals dependent variable equals independent variable. And one other reason is I want this two-thirds to be somewhere prevalent in the equation. The only way to get that is if it's y over x. Now this set of data are... Um, data points whose y over x ratios reduce down to two-thirds. So two-thirds, four-six, six-ninths, etc., etc. And then I can make a line that goes through all of those points, and every single point on this line is going to represent the set of points where the y values divided by the x values equals two over three. And more generally, I'm looking at every single possible pair of points that can be set up proportionally to equal two-thirds. And it happens that if I make this y over x, as opposed to x over y, y over x, the equation of this line is y equals 2 thirds times x. Because if I go ahead and I plug in a 3 for an x, I get the 3's cancel, I get y equals 2. If I plug in a 6 for the x, I get 2 times 2, which is 4. And so this number here, this 2 thirds, is what the fractions all simplify down to for every single pair of points except for the zero, zero. That's kind of an anomalous point.